You are now listening to Femme Regard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm. Femme. Hey, Femme fam. We have another interview styled episode today. We are finding that this season has just been really just the people we're interviewing are bringing new and really interesting ways of telling their stories. And this one gets real personal. Uh, we are bringing back on our our friend to the show and friend in life, Sabine Kawaji, who is a director and a writer, was the associate director on Sync, our feature. And she is a Lebanese Canadian director writer and has been dedicated to writing stories of underrepresented voices. Um, she really highlights her Lebanese background. And right now she's telling a really personal story around her her battle, her journey with epilepsy, but it's done through a documentary and she's really wanting to highlight and humanize other people's voices throughout this and bring in organizations to educate. And, you know, they, they say it so well, so better than I can right now um, about, you know, how it's something that's, you know, you would, uh, we would have not known. We had no idea that Sabine, who has worked with us, had this condition, right? And so there's just so many people, I think, that are dealing with this and feel alone. And um, she has brought on a producer, Tally Rabinowitz, who started out as, a, as an actress like us and uh, found really a way to empower her herself as a creative and as a storyteller through producing. So they've joined together and she also brings insight as someone like me and Tessa who had no idea, right, about this kind of condition and what it means and is bringing in that perspective and understanding and education along with that. So we're just so, um, we are just so blown away by these two ladies and, you know, for the, for, you know, again, women in film and media, you know, the struggles we have about bringing important stories to the table and to be taken seriously. It's always a journey and a battle. And this one has people dying every day because of things they don't know that they have access to, right? Like health, there's not enough being talked about it. So if, you know, you at all feel passioned to support these two women, you know, they have a crowdfunding campaign that's going on and um, you'll hear all about that, but it's just so important to, if not share at least and um, spread awareness to this campaign because they need the support and they have not been given that in the past. Sabine will go in about that, but it is something we need to see today. We need to be made today and you know we can't stress that enough ourselves so yeah and they touch upon too you know the struggle they had with when they started getting the ball rolling on this film you know trying to raise money and applying for grants and being told like this isn't an urgent issue you know and I'm sure if there's other documentary filmmakers out there you've probably run into the same kind of uh, problems you know and it's it's difficult and it can be frustrating but seeing them just take the power into their own hands and go independent and make the film anyway you know it's so inspiring so I think you guys are going to be really inspired by this and I really hope that even just this process you know of of us interviewing them and them sharing you know on social media is already going to get the ball rolling for awareness and then the film is going to be, you know, it's going to reach so many more audiences. Like it's going to be a global impact, I think. I I know it will be, and I know it's going to go far. So guys, like support these girls, listen to this episode. And and yeah, like Tessa said, take some notes. If, if you're finding that you have something similar you want to share, okay, how can I get this out here? How can I get started? And um, yeah, we know you'll be inspired. So enjoy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, girlies in the chat. We have Sabine, who y'all know is Femme Fam. She's been on the show uh, numerous times. And the latest episode was in our last season. She 
is our associate director for sync our feature and y'all know we have a special bond with this girl we admire her work and she is now working on a documentary which is why she's on the show today that we will get into she's also here with her producer tally rabinowitz who i also just became such a fan right away so ladies welcome to the show hello thanks for having us Hi. <laughs> thanks for being here i'm you know tessa and i where we were like we gotta support our girlies especially a documentary that hasn't existed like this one before uh fam surrounding epilepsy the mission toward a global cure and before we kind of dive into why this doc needs to be made for our friends and fam who aren't aware of the talented Sabine and the talented Tally. Tell us a little bit about your backgrounds, where you come from and how you two met. So Sabine, wanna take it away? Our Lebanese queen. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Sabine. I'm a director writer currently based in Vancouver, soon to be LA. And I work on a ton of narrative projects. I started in the music industry um, doing like music videos, but transitioned back to what I love, which is writing. Um, so yeah, I've done, I'm working on my debut short that comes this fall and I got to work on a feature, my first feature last summer through Sync. Um, and now I'm currently working on a feature length documentary about epilepsy, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. And I have my wonderful producer, which we actually met through a Facebook group, um, which fun fact, thanks to Carolina. She told me to, when I was looking for a producer and I wanted to awesome. expand to the States, you told me to kind of like look into that and, and, you know, go into a group where primary filming would be. So I posted it and then we hopped on a call and hit it off right away. And yeah, we've done, you know, so much in the last few months than has been done in years. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, right. Cause this has been, I think you've mentioned it to me personally, that this has been something you've been trying to take off for years now, Sabine, right? Like four years, four yeah. years. Wow like applying to grants, right? And getting, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> that whole, always a process. <laughs> always, always a process, but that is right. And I, I just want to highlight, you know, all the work was done through you, Sabine and Tally and like how you two met. But I was, I think for any of you out there who are, are listening and find yourself in a predicament where you're like, I need a producer. Where do I go to find one? You know, there's Facebook is a great, a place to find groups that are specific towards film, filming in specifically the city that you want. It's always, I think the advice I gave to, to Sabine was, you know, find a producer in Chicago. If like, that's where you're gonna be location scouting. Yeah, that's where you're gonna be primarily doing interviews. You know, it's, it's like those little um, logistical things that sometimes you know that's what you need, but then it's like, how do I get that? Like, how do I find that right fit? And, um, and I was just like pulling that all together. I'm like, let's just do this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, when she was starting to tell me about you, Tally, I was like, this girl, she is a go getter. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Tally, because I'm a, I'm a fan. I like Thank what I see, you. or at least here. <laughs> um, and see, now I see your beautiful face. <laughs> uh, well, I am. I started as an actress. I still act, but I found that. I wanted to kind of venture out into other endeavors within the film industry. Um, I found as an actress, you know, you're really only given the opportunities you get, you know, it can be very limiting, uh, especially for female characters in film. And so I started to write and produce because I felt like it was a really great way to kind of start seeing not only the characters but the stories that I really believed in and was passionate about come to life um you know COVID and the strike kind of made me rethink how I went about my career and it really did make me a go-getter because I was like okay I can't wait around anymore I need to just start making things and creating things and working with people um so yeah. I started producing last year I did two shorts in the fall and Amazing. loved it. I loved being a part of the whole process <laughs> from beginning to end. I felt like it was a great way to kind of marry my love of storytelling, but also working with people and just Hell seeing yeah. something really come together. 
And then Sabine in the end of 2023 posted in a Facebook group and I, you know, had just come off of the two shorts and I, I loved producing and she was looking for a producer in Chicago. And I was like, Ooh, I need to get this. I was like, this looks great. Um, and so we met, we had like a little zoom conversation and hit it off right away. And for me, you know, she kind of represented everything I was passionate about, like not only being another woman in this industry, like fighting for opportunity, but also just the documentary subject in general, epilepsy and, you know, her kind of telling me a little bit about herself. And, you know, I have two sisters, not with epilepsy, but with other various health conditions that are also very underrepresented, kind of overlooked. So it was something mm-hmm. I could easily fight for. Um, and so I was very happy when she was like, so if you're interested, I'm interested. And I was like, well, I'm interested. Um, and so we've been working together ever since. And I feel like now I've known her for years, even though it's only been months. Um, but no, it's been really great. Special producing bond. Yeah, no, sure. I'm like always in my brain now, like on the next stuff I'm working on, I'm like, how do I get Sabine involved in my (laughs) head? So, yeah. And I mean, that's the story for so many of us that started as actors and felt like, you know, we weren't getting the opportunities we wanted. So you start making your own content, you grow into producing. And I think it's great too, when you find other people that are, you know, kind of at the beginning of their career in that way, because, you know, as we're all starting out, we're all really excited. Yeah. And I think regardless of what point you are in your career, you should only take on projects that you're really excited about. But like, especially when you're, you know, you're new and you're hungry and getting somebody on their first feature or their first doc or, you know, whatever it is, like that person's going to work extra hard, you know, because it's their first time. You're all still learning together and you get to go through it together. And people are going to put in their best work and really want to, you know, fight for it in that situation. Yeah. I think what is really great too, is um, when you are building teams as a producer, like finding your, your go-to people. So I just, yeah, I feel a hundred percent the same with you, Tally. Like I'm always like, okay, love this girl. Like, of course I want to work with Sabine more. We're always like, Hmm, what (laughs) stories do we want to tell? (laughs) So it's, it's really fun. And, um, Sabine, why, what, what was important for you to finally step into just going back a little bit about like you said, we were just mentioning the four years to the reaching this point now where you're like, okay, I am, I'm done waiting around. I'm getting my producer. I'm getting my team. And now we, we know that you are crowdfunding and seeking uh, donors for this doc to be made and put into production finally. So what, what got you to this point right now? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's been a long process. I think the amount of rejection I got to make this film uh, due to the one of the main things I heard was just it's not an urgent epilepsy is not an urgent story to tell. And I think I can only hear that so many times before I will ram sorry, will get a bit, you know, annoyed by that. Um, and so I felt like the idea was there. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, work that I put in before with like even just the website, the pitch, like I had done a lot. But also, I really want to focus on the creative and also my health. So it was like, I knew I couldn't do it all. And then I wanted a really proactive team. And I was like, how much longer am I going to wait for a grant to believe that this is worth funding? Like, I I think there's a cycle people go around is like, one day they'll fund me and you go year after year after year. And I'm really not one to wait, especially with a topic like this, that I, I even said it, I think in the pitch video too, it's like every day without awareness and a cure literally lives are lost so I'm like why are we not why is this not being looked at and taken seriously so that's when I was like screw it we'll go independent and if those opportunities do come up down the road we're like now grants want to fund or whatever great but kind of being the ones to open that door um, which I find has to happen a lot especially when it's topics that again have not been done before not spoken about so I basically got to a point where I was like, how many more years can I keep waiting? Like this needs to happen. Um, And I'm happy that it's it's going the way that it has, especially with like Tally. She's so proactive and on top of things. And so we've, I always say we've done more in like 
four months now than four years. <laughs> so it's been really, really like um, amazing to have. But yeah, that was that was why. Sometimes you just need to make that push. And, you know, sometimes something just needs to happen like that, that it's like, okay, I'm not getting funded the way that I thought that I would, you know, the taking the route that I thought I was going to take. And that just forces you to just jump right in. That's independent film. <laughs> yeah. Independent. Like yeah. it's, I also through um, sync, like working with you guys on that, the feature, it just inspired me. Like I remember after maybe when I was still in LA, um, just telling like Carolina, you know, that this is like pushing me to actually want to get into the feature, like get mm -hmm. this feature rolling. And our first interview I did with you two, which was in 2020, you both asked me what's coming next. And I said a documentary and I was talking about this. Ooh. So this has been like always there. And I'm finding that the independent route is just so much better right now. Like for this stage, I'm like, you can do so much. And then from there, then sure, you know, you can go outside of the independent, whatever, but you need to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love I love the empowerment, even though it's a lot of hard work, but it you, you do feel more empowered once you get through a certain point. You're like, yeah, like I'm doing this now and it's finally in motion and I'm not waiting for someone to say yes to believe to me. Like, I believe in this and now I'm proactively going to get this thing made and instead of waiting around. Yeah. And even when, especially when it's a topic that's um, like personal as well and impacts your day to day, like it's yeah. for me, I'm just like that in itself, especially being a filmmaker and then having epilepsy, like it's not a career that is made for that. So to be able to still do it, I think it's like also to show that, you know, this, it is possible. You can still have, I mean, it depends case per case, but I've, I'm fortunate that I'm still able to have a, a fairly like normal life in that sense but um anyways all to say is like there's so many there are only so many moments where you can keep waiting especially when it's a very timely story and knowing like mortality rates and all that stuff I'm like no we gotta this has to be spoken about yeah um and yeah well I know it's mind-blowing to me when you said like that the grants were saying you know it's not an urgent topic meanwhile it's you know thousands of people are living with this condition and people are dying and like it's just how is that not urgent you know like where are people's brains I guess when when it comes to that like what is urgent quote unquote that they're giving grants to it just blows my mind sometimes with stuff like that well we I wish I could spill all the tea on that but I won't <laughs> <Yeah>. today <laughs> actually we spoke with um another epilepsy warrior and advocate and we actually learned from her last week that both of us didn't know before was that the statistics of epilepsy um is like incorrectly presented so the number of one in 26 americans having epilepsy is only the number of americans that have active seizures and so we so she actually was in talks with someone at the cdc and she learned that that's only that portion of people being counted and that that's not including people with epilepsy that have their seizures under control or are seizure free. So the number of people, not only in the U.S. or Canada, but like worldwide that have epilepsy is exponentially higher. And that's something we've kind of been like highlighting now. And, you know, I think for both of us in that conversation, we were we were shocked, but it also goes to show you like how prevalent this condition is and how common it is yet it's you know not talked about and there's this kind of like mystery to it that we're trying to unveil with this documentary um but yeah no well, it's just, like the more we learn the more we're like how has this not been made <laughs> it's mind-boggling yeah. it's like actually mind-boggling so i i as someone who do who doesn't still fully understand like and I'm sure our listeners too, like what epilepsy even is. Like I have an idea, but I'd love Sabine for you to, if you could explain a little bit clear, what is this condition and is it something that can go away, be cured? Can you dive into that a little bit further? Um, so yeah, epilepsy, I mean, the like scientific definition, I not memorize in my head, but 
from what I know, like there, yeah, so there, there's no cure for epilepsy. Um, that was something that's like when I was diagnosed as a kid, I was like, oh, what? Like, I thought that it was something that kind of goes away. There is a chance that you can outgrow it if you have it very young, um, which is like a possibility, but I was not one of those. Like I ended up having like a lifetime thing, but essentially the, do you want to give like the scientific definition or kind of like my, def- okay, because I was like, I don't know if I'm memorized. No, no, um, go, d- tell us in your words, because that's, that's what we're going to understand. So yeah, what, yeah. and what, and whatever you feel comfortable sharing, I'd love to know like your personal experience about it. And like, I know we had a moment too talking about sync and like what that was like for you being on a set, you know, if you want to, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, just you know, this is your experience and this is why it's important that you feel this needs to be like shared with, you know, with everyone to understand a little bit more. Well, like with epilepsy, there's various forms Mm -hmm. um, and there's also various forms of seizures. Like it's not this very generalized uh, thing that you hear about. It's not these just like one or two words. Mm -hmm. Um, And it also is... uh, like it impacts anyone and everyone. So you can be any age or any stage in your life. It's not like, I, I know people say like, oh, even when you're older. So if you don't have it now, you could develop it in your 60s. Like wow. it's something that can impact anyone. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of like misconceptions about it. Um, like, again, I I did the math yesterday. I'm actually 10 years seizure free. I thought it was eight. So wow. I'm, I'm very like fortunate that that's the case. But I still deal with like the side effects of it and the toll it takes on like your body, especially in an industry like this. But to give context on like my story and why I want to do it and obviously we'll dwell more in the future, but like I was diagnosed really young. So I was like nine when I was and it was like a very big, like it wasn't like a little thing and then they were like, you have it. Like it was a tonic clonic seizure, which essentially is like one of the worst that you can get. And then it led to status epilepticus, which I've, I, the definition basically is like you're having a consecutive amount that if it doesn't stop can lead to death um thank god i'm here but my net put me in a coma and then like so i was gonna die basically you were in a really coma die. yeah girl <laughs> I <should not> be <laughs> oh my god that is so scary and at at age nine this was all happening to you and yeah wow that is so scary that is so yeah. scary. I'm just- it was, uh, it's it's weird because you kind of don't realize it in the moment. And then afterwards, I'm like, when I'm in therapy, I'm like, oh, okay. So this impacted here and there. Yeah. But th- like, yeah, that that being said, and that's just a bit of the, you know, many years that I, I've dealt with it till now. But I don't think like mentally and emotionally, I was ready to make this film until now. Like, I actually think it's almost better that it that it's happening now. Because um, with like, being a filmmaker we all know like especially when it's a personal story um or like your baby you have to be in a right space emotionally to do it and I think had I done it any younger I I it would have been so much harder because it has been emotional like doing all these interviews with different epilepsy warriors which is what we've been doing like I have to hold back from tearing up a lot of the time because I'm getting like memories that I forgot about like just little things that I'm like oh shit or we learned about a certain kind of seizure that is I don't know if it was, was it called okra or tally? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not okra, the, the thing you Listen, eat. it was, the audio was <laughs> off. I was like, yeah. okay. This is why I have tally because she can correct me on that. But um, the, yeah, it was something. So that kind of seizure, for instance, because people are used to the graphic one that you see on like television. Whereas that one, it's more of a thing of um, like you kind of, it's like a daydream almost like it looks like someone's daydreaming and then they're saying stuff and then they snap out of it so you have like no memory of it and then it clicked for me I was like oh my god before I was diagnosed like my siblings used to kind of not joke around but kind of be like you were saying random words and you were like zoned out and this and that and I'd have no memory of it and now I'm like those were seizures like it's just stuff that doctors and like with all due respect to doctors, but they, they're not upfront about things that you just end up learning through foundations and you end up learning through different people with epilepsy and like, but yeah, but leading it back to film too, like having an understanding team and like that support around you is really good. So like, even though, you know, Tally, like you said, like you don't have epilepsy, but you're so passionate and understanding about it and like the fight that you have for it, just having that in your, within your crew is really important. Um, 
because I'm kind of just rambling right now, but like, um, yeah, that's why it's just super important to make this. And I was not intending to ever be my, my goal essentially was to reveal to people in the entertainment industry that I have epilepsy when the documentary was done. So like mm-hmm. the trailers posted, that's like surprise. Um, whereas, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, whereas I just, I, yeah. I know the story journey for you all. So yeah. yeah and, and that's why, um, but Tally was like, no, that should be the first thing that, you know, launches it to, to like give people a reason to, you know, want to support this. And so it was a really, really big push for me to come out about that and do like that pitch video and to post it like my heart that morning I was like I'm gonna this is a lot but uh the support especially like just glo- like I'm gonna use the word globally but from people that I don't even know has just been crazy so yeah that's why I'm, I'm excited for the doc but I'm hoping we can get the right support to make it happen and not again just be like brushed off because it's not fun yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's like you're saying, it brings people together, like globally, like people you don't even know, because, you know, so many people are struggling with this or have loved ones that are struggling with it. And like you're saying, there's a lot that um, like because of media and stuff, we're not really aware of, you know, like it's not it doesn't just mean you're having these, you know, big seizures all the time. Like there's so many different levels to it and, and, you know, different ways that people are dealing with it. So, yeah, this is a really it it's something that's going to bring people together, like, you know, and you're going to get, find your support through that. Yeah. Tally, I'm, I'm curious uh, what has been the most eye-opening thing you've discovered throughout doing these interviews and, and working alongside Sabine. Um, well, for me coming into doing a doc on epilepsy, I was like the majority of the population. You know, I had a very uh, certain thought about epilepsy, but I didn't really understand it. I didn't really know it. Um, Mm -hmm. And after the first time Sabine and I talked, I like started doing a ton of research uh, just to learn more. But similar to Sabine, the, the most I've learned have been from other, we've mostly talked with women so far with epilepsy when we've done certain interviews and uh, similar to Zabine, I have to hold myself back from getting emotional, hearing these stories, hearing what they've gone through. Also just seeing Sabine connect to these people while they're talking has, it's like a weird proud mom like moment where I'm, I feel like Sabine was so worried about sharing her story and now it's like fostering such a really wonderful community and connection between all of these people. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's also just so much more complicated than I think most people understand. It's learning about like the side effects from medication. You know, we talked to a woman who had issues with pregnancies because of her medications, even though she had been seizure free. And it's like, it's learning all of these little things that nobody knows about, um, that are really huge, big deals in their lives, um, and it kind of just flies under the radar. So being able to continue to learn. And like I said, I feel like I'm a good representation of like who we're also trying to reach because, you know, if you can get someone like me, that's now ready to like fight for that Blubsy community. Like we want that on a broad scale. We don't, you know, we want the epilepsy community to feel seen and heard, but we also want the rest of the population to take it seriously and to like get as impassioned as everyone else and like feel like we need to fight and, you know, donate and talk about it and make it part of the healthcare conversation and not Mm. brush it under the table. Um, So I don't know. It's been, it's been really nice working on this and like learning so much. And then also just like my respect and appreciation for Sabine obviously has, it's it's crazy. Every time she talks to someone, I'm like, I, it's like this weird, like proud feeling that I get every time she shares and opens up. And sometimes she opens up more and more and I learn more and more, even though like we've talked about like her story. It's like she said, she'll talk to someone and then things will come back to her. And then I'm like watching that happen. And it's this like, wow. it's like a very emotional, powerful, like beautiful thing, frankly. So yeah and to like build on that too um one of our main things 
and I'll also specify like even little moments that brought back memories for me, but we're trying to really humanize the condition because these are your everyday people. And again, considered invisible. So you would not think that someone has or is going through it. So really about humanizing it, like even, you know, the mom that that dealt with like pregnancy issues, and stuff like that, that I'm like, if people could see that in a day to day or see, you know, how all of us kind of operate day to day, you could be like, damn, one, that could be you. Or two, like, I should, you know, have more empathy or want to support this because it just impacts like six, literally 65 million people like worldwide. Um, but to, to, to like say on what tell you were, it's cool to see that like you're seeing that too, but there are little things like one of the women we spoke to, um, she said that when she was diagnosed, she just got a pamphlet and it was like, this is, you know, this is epilepsy. Like this is, that's the info she got. And then I just got a flashback to being in like children's hospital when I was a kid and literally being given a pamphlet. And they were like, read it. That's what you have. And then, then that pamphlet being passed around to like some kids in my class or like my teacher and just being like, this is what it is. And I was like, what? Like that's even though I'm young, like that's even what my parents got. So I'm like yeah. that is not, it should be a deeper mm-hmm. combo because there's stuff we're learning about now. So just stuff like that where I'm like, damn, like I didn't even, you know, totally forgot about that. But it's a part of the journey. And then to like, we interviewed, um, an author who did a book about kids book about epilepsy which is really really great to have Mm -hmm. um and she said she never thought that her first book because she's a writer would be about a like a very personal story to her and that's kind of how I feel in film I was like I never thought my first feature would be about epilepsy or like a condition that's you know so close to me because at the age that I got uh that they told me it was a lifetime diagnosis I just actually got introduced to filmmaking so it was like a really weird so like to see everything kind of come full circle has been crazy but that's why I just you got to fight for what you believe in and like Mm -hmm. screw people who don't believe in it you just got to keep going because they'll all come around once they see it kick off yeah exactly and it's films like this that raise awareness too you know like it's it's not just like um media I guess that's like sweeping it under the rug like it's the actual healthcare community that is as well you know and it's such an important topic well I'll speak to like real quick on the pamphlet conversation like we got off the call Sabine and I remember being like oh not enraged but like the fact that this woman was diagnosed when she was five and now she's 47 so when she was diagnosed 40 plus years ago she was just given the pamphlet And then you go 20 plus years later when Sabine's diagnosed and she's just given a pamphlet. And so it was the fact that in 20 plus years in the healthcare system, the process of like diagnosis hadn't changed at all. Like the information they provided hadn't changed at all. And that's 20 years. We're talking about a woman in the 80s and then a girl in the 2000s. So that was like another fuel to the fire where you're like, oh, how has that not changed in that much time? So, right. you know, like There's you said, some... it is the medical community as well. Yeah, I, I just want to also say how proud I am of you, Sabine, for coming forward and sharing your personal story. I know how hard it was for you, but and I know it's still like something you're getting used to. So thank you for sharing it on here with us and feeling safe to do so. But like you were also saying how, you know, you want to humanize it. I, I would have never known like you had this condition. And I think there's so many people that I probably don't know that have this condition. And even right now I'm learning new things that you've experienced. And again, would have never known. So it's like, I, I found it really interesting to say, hear you say that it's something like so invisible. Um, and is there something where, you know, by humanizing it, um, I feel like you're also instilling a sense of hope. And what does that sense of hope mean to you? Both of you is what is it that you are trying to lead with in that space? Uh, I mean, for me, that there's a possibility of like having a world or, you know, that is free of like epilepsy and suit up. Um, And I know it's a big thing to say, but just knowing that like we can be a part of that, 
a history like that you know like this is going to end up being like a moment in history at one point so like knowing that we can be a part of that fight to make it happen and then give the epilepsy community like a glimpse <clears throat> not a glimpse but like give them hope that like this is a possibility like if we do it could be a possibility you know and i i really do believe that um and also it, tying into hope is like not feeling alone because I have felt more of a sense of community the last few weeks than I have my entire diagnosis just hearing stories and realizing we have different forms of epilepsy but we've all gone through the same shit and so it's feeling a sense of community and yeah hope that like there will be improvements even if it's let's say not a cure in the next year but like maybe more research more funds put into that so yeah yeah I mean I I guess I would say for us with this documentary and these, this idea of hope, I mean, I think Sabine pretty much nailed it, but again, just making it go beyond just the community and making it something that people widespread can feel impassioned about. And the hope too, is that, you know, knowing that when you're doing the right things and you're, you're feeling really passionate about something like this, it can also bleed into other things and it doesn't, you know, we live in a society where it's very easy to cast judgment and it's very easy to marginalize other people for being different or for having problems. And like, for us, I feel like, at least for me, you know, being able to help fight for something and make a more compassionate and understanding society, I would love to see that continue, you know, no matter what what you're feeling like you have to hide or what you feel different about. And, you know, I think this is just kind of like the first step of that is like fighting for a group of people to get the recognition, to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel safe, and then continuing to do that, like with anyone, anywhere about anything. So that's kind of like the hope of it. And to quickly add on that too, like, as filmmakers or what I'm seeing more when we break down that barrier and actually start to show our, our true selves, which is like very hard to do, the work becomes so much more authentic. And I think that's when people start to be so much more drawn to you. And like, I, I'm really going along the theme of like turning pain into purpose. That's mm -hmm. like my biggest thing right now. And I think that's being said and, and seen through the process of this, of this feature and like with all, you know, everything Tally was saying and what I just said previously about the, you know, the sense of hope and stuff like that. It's just like you can use your career to make a difference, like whatever career you're in. There are so many avenues and to a cause that's like important to you. And um, uh, I had a really good thought in my head. It just slipped my mind. <laughs> See if it comes back. <laughs> no, that's so true, though. And I mean, that extends to like all genres too, you know, like it doesn't just necessarily have to be documentaries. You know, if you have a message that you want to share or, or awareness that you want to raise, like that's, that's what art is for, you know, you can make a difference. Yeah. And I like how I, this is something I said to you, Sabine Talley too, that you mentioned, it's not, it's not just epilepsy. It's anyone who has this kind of condition. So I was really like, girl, just do it. Cause like there's other people who have some, maybe something else. And this gives them a sense of hope that, okay, like these are, these kinds of things are finally being put out there for us to like, for everyone to kind of understand and have this understanding and not look at me differently because I have something, you know, and have more of awareness and understanding. So I think that I, I, I think it's so beautiful and important to, to start with something like epilepsy and watch it grow maybe into something else, right? Where can we bridge into other, other conditions that aren't spoken about more enough. And I like, I can go on my like own personal thoughts there, but it's so important, you know, women's health, like let's, you know, like furthermore expand that. And that's um something I, I just wrote a short script on something like that because I don't think women's health are looked into enough and there's fears around that pregnancy and all of that. And 
I, I've entered it into a competition that I couldn't pitch if I didn't have a personal attachment to, right? And for me, I can't just write anything anyways. You know, there's always like a, something that we need to feel vulnerable about and it's scary, but it's like, chances are there's a lot of people that feel the same way. So I think that's, uh, I think we all do that as artists, as creators, as storytellers. And um, I kind of wanted to, pivot now to how you want to tell how how do you want to go yeah how do you want to tell the, the story with the documentary is it just interviews Sabine are you doing some one person's kind of like story throughout it encompassing yours I'm, I'm just curious like how do you how do you see the stock being built yeah so that that has been a process um especially working on such a long form thing because I've only done really short form uh narratives but we're yeah we're intending to tell various uh stories and various families so we're going it it will be interviews but um currently at the moment i the direction that i'm intending or thinking of going in is like going in through my perspective and like bringing the audience in through me to meet these different families and see their stories in a way that's like taking a more modern approach to the documentary versus just like sit down interviews and this is the story and you know that's it like taking a really um personal approach where you feel like you are in these rooms with them and you feel like you're relating to these families and to these like kids and mothers and fathers like everyone and uh it will be backed up by you know medical professionals researchers as well so it's not just like us saying our stories but being like here are the actual facts and then including CEOs of very big foundations um, that all have the similar goal of like finding a cure and having them talk about, you know, what they've been doing and like why we should continue this mission. And I think the the storyline that we're going for and why we want so many different perspectives is, is to show like how important this really is. And again, what I've been saying is like the impact that it has on anyone, everyone. And it's not just about our stories, but like the impact that it has on your family and friends, you know, and the community, like that's something where uh, that in itself can be really traumatizing for like family and friends to see you in that state. Um, so it's, it's going to be a really, you know, um, I think an emotional piece, but also in a, in a good way, because we're going to start seeing epilepsy in, in a way that hasn't been done before. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be various, various narratives all put into one, um, and kind of seeing how all our stories interconnect basically. Yeah. Yeah. When you were, um, compiling like your list of, of people that you were going to interview, did you find anyone reluctant to talk about either their story or like the research or work they've done around it? Or was everyone pretty eager to share? So as far like the people that we currently have um everyone seemed really eager to share um because they're they share that same frustration of like why are, the hell are we not talking about this or why are we so underfunded like they're all in the same headspace as us and we're actually currently in the process of like getting more speakers so we're would say kind of we're close to like halfway there which is nice to see the different voices we can get but so far the ones who have agreed all all are very keen on on sharing their stories yeah yeah, it's been lovely. That's also a process I've never, you know, done before with docs is like reaching out to this many people and, and that, but it's been really interesting. I love that you have all these different um these different te different teams and people who are attached to something like this. I, I think that's such a smart way of encompassing all facets from the friends and family to people who are leading organizations and are doing the the good, the, the job to, you know, fight for it. And man, I'm sure there's just so much that you're learning from them and that we get to learn, you know, that can really speak in a way, like you were saying, can I say the scientific stuff? And it's like, you know, they can speak, you know, on it for you. That's what what's so cool. Like you shouldn't be having to speak on it yourself. And that's why there's this beauty of this documentary that you get to kind of show it. So I, I love that you've really found all these different pockets of people that can come together and, um, and these organizations that I take it are based in Chicago, where, you know, Tally's going to help lead the reins there. Tell us, like, are you going to have to travel much? Like, where are you filming all of this? 
Uh, well, so I'll hop on that. So we are speaking with a really big foundation in Chicago, um, probably the biggest foundation we will have in our documentary. Ooh, my voice cracked. We'll be in Chicago. Um, we've also spoken to a foundation in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, there's a woman that we're probably going to interview near Philadelphia. Uh, there's Sabine's family and another family and another doctor in Vancouver. And then we're hoping to interview another foundation out of LA and family. So it's really, we're trying to go anywhere wow. we can just, you know, the whole point is this is global. It's not just Canada. It's not just the U S there's a foundation in the UK that reached out to us two days ago that we were like, Oh, wow. Like we're, we're getting around. Um, so, you know, we're going to kind of go where we can with this um, and try to kind of reach all of these different pockets that you were talking about. And I mean, the main thing is, and I think it's kind of like the encapsulating sentence we've been using lately, is that mm. epile epilepsy doesn't discriminate. And so we're really running with that. We want to make sure that like everyone no matter what kind of epilepsy they have or seizures they have, no matter what age, gender, race, you know, financial status, we want everyone to kind of feel represented, um, which I think is kind of the exciting part right now that we're going through of finding these people that want to speak out. Um, and again, yeah. kind of all over the place, which is really cool. So there will be traveling done for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Or, er, mm, sorry, <laughs> I was like, I'm excited for that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm excited to get the different perspectives on it. And uh, I was gonna say what was cool to learn because I thought that I had to limit like how many people we interview or how many, you know. And Holly was like, no, it's actually better to get more and then see what you can work with from there. So like, let's interview as many people as we can. Let's involve as many people as we can versus feeling like creatively limited, which has been really a, a great perspective to kind of take into documentary film and something mm -hmm. I'm learning about documentary film that, you know, yeah. you can, better to get more than less basically. Yeah. Especially too, like in this modern world where half your marketing is going to be like social media and stuff like that. If you have that extra footage, it's kind of, you know, B-roll that you can use as like, even just more marketing and raising more awareness for the film. Yeah, we've been doing social media interviews. Um, we've been not only looking for people to interview for our doc, but people to interview for our social campaign. So that's been really nice. And, you know, so far we've found really unique perspectives and backgrounds. Like Sabine said, we had an author of a children's book. Uh, tomorrow we're interviewing an, an artist who like sells work for a living. Um, and that's the other thing we're like, look, they're just like us. They, <laughs> you know, it's humanizing yeah. and it's, we're hoping to continue to bring that not only to our doc, but to our page as we go along, because we said, this is more than a film, it's a movement. So the more we're active, you know, on our Instagram, sharing different stories and perspectives and getting to meet people face to face and just talk and just get to know them, the better, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I was, um, the thought that I forgot actually just came back when you were talking, Tally, is like, there with epilepsy, like, there are people that qu quite literally have multiple seizures a day, like multiple a day, severe. And then there are ones that every week or every two weeks or every month, like, actively to the extent that it does impact their day to day. And with the way I'm looking at it, I was talking to my mom about this yesterday. I was like, you know, I've been like 10 years seizure free. And I've been able to work in the film industry and the music industry. Obviously it had its toll on me, but like, I feel like I'm the way I'm looking at it in terms of like my career tra trajectory, but also my purpose in like <laughs> life yeah. is like, I feel like I'm the right one to tell this story because I'm, I'm fortunate that I am in a state where I have been stable to be like, I can be that voice to, or that person and like be like let me open those doors for everyone else and then in turn like get more funding research but just feeling like I'm in a state in my health where I can do it I don't know how it's coming off but I don't know if I'm wording this right no, but just saying absolutely. like I think it all lined up for a reason yeah that this is where I'm at right now and doing what I'm doing um and that I'm able to kind of like go about this process without 
you know, just being able to do it in a way that it's like, I don't know. It's healthy for you. It's like a healthy place for you to speak on it and have the strength and have teams of people. Like, I really do think um, when we get frustrated that we don't get those grants or those funding opportunities. I mean, it happened with me and Tessa on sync. I'm so glad we didn't do the script that we had ready at that time. And that I had more time with Tessa to polish and understand like all the production facets. Like, so we were so ready for pre-production. Like we knew what we were doing and we were in a place to really take off. So outside of like a personal journey, I feel like, I think you were, well, A, the personal journey is the most important. I think you being at a healthy place to tell this, I think that's that's actually, you should feel so, I hope you do. I hope you feel so excited that you can be that mouthpiece. And and I think that's what I was taking away about it, that you can be, it's it's so amazing. And, that, and, and I'm sure like you're filled with gratitude to be in a place to speak on it and be the mouthpiece. But I also think now you're in a much better position too, to produce something like this too, with the teams you've built, with your girls here, bam, bam, like ready to support you that who cares about everyone who's like not been a supporter. Cause you're right that they're going to come around and be like, Oh, I should have invested in this. I should have taken this seriously. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm learning now because I, I think when the video dropped, I became I was very, very grateful for the support, but I came became fixated on the ones who didn't because it was a lot of people that I'm like, dude, like we're friends or you were like, <laughs> I've worked with you on like productions. Like, how are you just by you're seeing all my Okay, <laughs> before I continue that sentence. Um, I'm not gonna continue that sentence right now, but just seeing it, it was kind of like I was focusing on that. I was like, damn, this is heartbreaking. Like, how are you guys not especially because a lot of it was within my own city? And right. I was like, what like I'm getting more support abroad, you know? And um, but I flipped the switch on that and being like, I'm gonna focus on the positive and the people who are supporting and continue to build that. And like I said, maybe just those people don't understand it yet and they'll come around when it does, yeah. you know, when it is done and just focusing more on the, on the, on the positive and like what we've been doing. So now I'm like, that was just maybe the first day, but now I've flipped it and I'm really, really happy. It's been really emotional to like see the support and the people that are like, damn, like you're, you know, we didn't know this and you're doing it. And um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you're in fundraising mode for it. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the campaign, where you're at, how much you're trying to raise, where can everyone find it? You want to to yeah, sure. I'll take it away. Um, so we, yes, we are currently in our crowdfunding mode. Um, we've gone fully independent uh, since you know the grant process is not only difficult but long, and. Um, You know, we're still reaching out to some production companies about partnering up and we're still talking to certain people about sponsoring, but our base is going to be from crowdfunding. So we have our Indiegogo um, that you can find not only on our Instagram page, but on our website. Um, We're raising 83,000 Canadian dollars, uh, which in the U.S. is... I would have to calculate that. Um, I think I, I think like sixty one thousand in the U.S. Yeah, I think in the sixties or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're currently raising money. We have about thirty seven, thirty eight days left of our campaign, um, and we have been raising money. And I feel like it's only gonna keep going the further along we get into this campaign. The more people we're reaching the more people we talk with, um, you know, we're going to start doing some PR for it. Uh, hopefully more interviews, more podcasts, more opportunities for Sabine to kind of speak out and share a story, but also connect. Um, so yeah, we're just really, we're in the hustle phase. You know, I, I told Sabine, I was like, man, we thought we were working hard in January and February, but now that we're actually in, like fundraising mode, it's just gone way up in terms of what we're working on and, you know, scheduling interviews and meetings and ways to collab. And it's been fun. It's challenging, but it's been really, really rewarding. And I feel like 
the more the word gets out, the easier it would also be to continue to raise funds because people are really starting to get behind it. And we've only had positive feedback. We haven't had any negative feedback so far. Like the only message we've been getting is thank you. You know, thank you for making this. Um, so that also just keeps motivating us to keep going. So Amazing. It's so good to hear that you're getting such good feedback and support. Yeah. And please let our listeners know um, website, social media handles, all of that, where they can find the crowdfunding and keep up with the journey. Yeah. So uh, for like our Instagram, it's at epilepsy, the film uh, in the bio, we have our Indiegogo uh, where you can donate literally any donation, small or big will really, really make a difference. Um, and then we also have our website, epilepsythefilm.com. Uh, we have more about, you know, the mission, everything. And uh, we are launching like a YouTube channel too, where we'll have like full videos of the interviews and stuff like that. But the Instagram is, is going to be really good because we have a great social media manager. She'll be posting, she's posting daily now and stuff. So lots of, that's, those are the two, I think, where you can, our major platforms to find us. Yeah. Amazing. And also, if you would like to share uh, your personal, like Instagram, you know, whatever to, for people to follow your individual journeys as well as filmmakers. Uh, yeah. So my Instagram handle is my name, but my name is hard to spell. So I will spell it out. So it's Tally Rabinowitz. So T-A-L-I-R-A-B-I-N-O-W-I-T-Z. Thank you. Follow her. Mine is at Sabine K Film. S A B I N E K Film. Thank you, ladies. Amazing. I am I'm so glad we got to get you on the show today and speak to such an important cause and mission. And we know that you are going to complete it, that it's going to launch, it's going to soar, no doubt about it. So keep, keep on going. We know how hard it is to, to crowdfund when you were saying all of that tally. I'm like, yeah, we know <laughs> it's, it's been, it's a, it's a, it's a rodeo, but it's so rewarding. Like, ah, uh, it's going to be amazing for you too. So Congrats on all the hard work. We'll be following along and sharing. And fam, fam, you know that's how we do. Go ahead, support these ladies. Even following their social media page is always some sort of support um, that we know goes a long way for ourselves. So, just even sharing and supporting, uh, you know, is is such an important way to to help. So, thank you again, ladies, and we will stay tuned for how everything ends up, and and love to continue talking to you. Thanks for listening to Fem Regard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the Fem Fam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com. listening to the Geekscape Network.